Hi guys, it's Monica. Before I jump into the actual video, I just wanted to come out and say a big, big thank you for 300 subscribers. I can't believe I've already hit 300. It was, I feel like I just made like my 100 subscriber thank you, but I don't want you to think that I'm not grateful. I love doing this as a hobby. I love putting these videos together and I just love makeup and I love getting to share, you know, my passion with other people. I love talking to you guys in the comments. I absolutely love everything about this, so thank you so much, and let's go ahead and jump into the video. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm trying out a brand that is new to me, but not necessarily new to the scene because they've been around for a while. I'm talking about Geek Chic Cosmetics. Geek Chic Cosmetics is an indie brand that is really known for their eyeshadows that are based on like certain nerdy things in pop culture like they have a Harry Potter collection, a Doctor Who collection. I was more interested in a couple of their anime products and then they had a Hannibal Lecter eyeshadow collection which I was all over. So I did pick up quite a few products. I grabbed some eyeshadows, a blush, a highlighter, and some foundation samples that I'm going to be trying out today. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like trying out new brands and you want to see me try any more indie brands in the future. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video. So if you want to see my entire experience ordering from Geek Chic, including processing, pricing, shipping times, and then all the products, just keep watching. Okay, so I ordered from the Geek Chic Cosmetics website back on March 2nd. So I placed the order then. It took them about a week and a half to process and get it shipped out. So they shipped my package on the 10th of March and then I received it the 15th of March. So it took from the 2nd from me ordering it to the 15th for me to actually have it here in my possession. Um, they shipped USPS first class here within the United States. I believe they do offer international shipping, but I think there is an extra charge with that. I received a little bubble mailer just like this in the mail. And then everything was packaged carefully in a little like Ziploc baggie just like this, except for the samples that I got. I got three foundation samples and they come in like these little plastic clamshells. So these were inside the bubble mailer, but not within this little plastic case right here. So what I thought was really interesting about ordering from Geek Chic, and I think this is true across a couple of indie brands, is that there are different sizes of each item that you can order. Almost every item has a sample size available, which I really, really liked. So this little clamshell cost me about $1.75 for a decent amount of product to sample. I picked up three of the foundations. Two are very dark, and the first one might be a little too light, but I'll show that in these swatches that I will throw in a little bit later. They also have samples of the eyeshadows that you can pick up. I think the only ones that you can get samples of are like their limited edition kind of collections. Like the Sailor Moon Tiara Stardust Highlighter. I'm not sure if you can get a sample of that. Um, same with the Marie Antoinette a Let Them Eat Cake Blush. I forgot to mention that inside the package they do give you like a little receipt slash invoice and they do have they left a little like hand drawn note on there which I, I love little touches like that. She just wrote enjoy and a little smiley face. I don't know. I just find little touches like that to be very cute. Okay, looking at my receipt now, the little samples weren't a dollar seventy five, they were a dollar twenty five. And you do get a decent amount of product in there. So all of the eyeshadows that I purchased were 5 grams each and they were $5.99 which if you're looking at the container they are all loose shadows and there's a lot of product. 5 grams is a lot of product for $5.99. The highlighter which is 20 grams was $10.99 and then the blush which was also 10 grams was $9.99. I hit the within like domestic $50 minimum for free shipping, so I did receive free first class USPS shipping with this order. Okay, so with all of those details out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into swatches of all the products that I picked up.
base look since I've already done my base I've done my eyebrows I did my foundation concealer I threw on contour because I didn't see um, a contour available on their site but now thinking about it I think I can use like their darker foundation probably as like a bronzer since it is too dark for me um, but I am going to uh, prime my eyes today with my normal uh, MAC paint pot in soft ochre and I'm gonna set it with the lightest shade of the foundation powder the powder went on very nice and smooth. There was a bunch of kick up, but of course it's a loose powder. You're going to get a little bit of that. Just looking at it now, I think it is probably way too light for me to actually use as a foundation. But I wouldn't be opposed to using the rest of the sample like this setting my primer. For today's look, I really want to dig into a couple of the greens that I picked up along with one of the duochrome shimmers. So I'm just going to go ahead and define my eye real quick, considering that these are all shimmer shades. I want to go into the few mattes from my Tarte Clay Play palette. I'm just going to take the trio of shadows in the middle and take that light brown color and just throw it in my crease real quick. Okay, so I do have the NYX Glitter Glue with me right here. I'm going to use it all over my lid. But first, I'm going to try to work it into my crease. I'm not sure how much fallout is going to happen, but I just want to see how, how the product can perform. We'll see. I'm going to use both a big fluffy brush and a little bit more of a denser brush. Starting off with the Cowboy Bebop shade and just dipping my brush in. And just by dipping my brush in, I got a whole lot of pigment. <laughs> So good news and bad news, it actually blends out into the crease really nice. You don't see as much of the shimmer and you're left with like a nice blending like matte olive green. Unfortunately, I am living in Fallout City right now. I got a whole bunch of it right down here and a whole bunch right over here. So I'm going to try to lay down some translucent powder and swipe that away. If you plan to do a whole look out of this, I would really recommend doing your eyes first and then going in with the rest of your makeup. If you're just using a shade all over the lid with a glitter glue, I don't think you're going to have to do all that. Ooh, I'm liking it. So on this eye, I just dipped my brush into the product and went straight on and got a lot of fallout. But I liked the effect that it had. It even blended out really nicely. On this eye, I tapped into the product and then clicked off the excess and then went in. I did have to go in three times on this one eye to build up the color to the same intensity as this side. So in the future, I'd probably do my eyes first and I would just go in and then clean up any fallout afterwards because it does look really nice. Next, I'm going to take the shade Evil Lurks and I'm going to use that darker, more shimmery green to build up the outer V. I'm assuming I'm going to get a whole bunch of fallout again, so I'm gonna go ahead and just lay down some translucent powder with a sponge. So that shade is a little bit harder to blend out and the glitter that is actually in it are just larger hunks of glitter so those will fall out but I do like just the matte dark like forest green shade that is left behind so I would recommend dipping your brush in tapping off all of the glitter and the excess and then building it up in your outer corner if that's how you like it I think this would also look beautiful with a glitter glue I really do like how the colors look blended together. I did get a little bit of a patch like over here that wouldn't blend out as well. Yeah, like I said, the second shade, the Evil Lurk shade, doesn't blend out as well as that first Cowboy Bebop shade, but it does look beautiful. You just have to put in a little bit of extra time. For my lid shade today, I'm gonna go in with Professional Curiosity from the Hannibal Lecter collection, and it's this beautiful, like, light purple pink duochrome duochrome jesus christ light purple pink duochrome shade so for that i am going to take the nyx glitter glue take that all over my lid and then jump right in 
with the shade. That shade is absolutely stunning, especially when it catches the light just right. Again, there's a lot of fallout. Definitely would recommend doing your eyes first if you're using any of these shadows. When I'm not filming, I always do my eyes first, so this really isn't a problem for me. Oh, and I'm just loving that shade. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this on the other eye and then jump in with liner and mascara. So I just threw on my normal liners. I'm trying out a new mascara. I'm not sure how I like it yet, but I'm still testing it out. And then on the lower lash line, I just went in with the CU Space Cowboy, the Cowboy Bebop color, and I'm loving this eye look. It is me. <laughs> I love the greens. I love how the duo chrome is looking on my lids. I'm just loving the whole look. I won't be doing a full wear test with all of this today, but I will give you all the updates for how they lasted in the description box below, so make sure you check that out. So let's move on to the last two products. I got a highlighter and a blush. So the highlighter is called the Moon Tiara Stardust, obviously from Sailor Moon, and this gives you 20 grams of product in a container just like this. So you've got like a little sifter in there, you just twist around in the center compartment and you get into the main actual tub of product. The blush has the same container and this is the Let Them Eat Cake blush and it's got a little picture of Marie Antoinette on the cover. Now this is actually how I found Geek Chic Cosmetics. I don't remember how or where but I saw like a picture or like a post about this blush. It might have been on Tumblr. But I saw this blush and I thought, wow, even though I don't use blush, I think the packaging is beautiful. Like, I love the concept. And like, as a collector, I thought I want that in my collection. So this is what actually brought me to the website in the first place. Hey, it's got the same container and then all your product is right there. So let's go in with the blush first. It is a loose blush and it does have what looks like a little bit of shimmer in it. So I'm going to tap just a little, little, little bit into the lid. There we go. Yeah. Like I'm only going to go in with like that much to begin with. I have a Morphe M437 that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to tap it in, tap off the excess and then tap once on the back of my hand just to make sure I don't go over with the blush and let's smile. It's actually a very nice color and I was afraid that you would be able to see like the shimmer but you don't really see it I think it's cuz most of it's on the back of my hand so if you just tap off the excess and then go in you'd probably see a little bit more shimmer but by tapping it off in the back of my hand I do see most of the shimmer there so I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side I definitely went overboard on this side <laughs> so I'm gonna take my face powder and just powder over it And there we go. I'm actually, I like the tone of it. I like definitely the application where I tap it off in the back of my hand because I'm not a fan of shimmery blush or bronzer. I like to leave that all to my highlight. But, you know, I'm not mad at it. It might be a little much with the eye look that I'm wearing today. But overall, as a blush by itself, I think it is nice. You really only need a little, little, little bit. <laughs> You saw how much I tapped off into my lid. You have 20 grams of this stuff. And this was only like $9.99. I think that's a great bargain. You're obvious, like, I don't think you're ever going to run out of this. But my suggestion would be to go in with a super light hand and probably a bigger, fluffier brush than this one. I actually don't have a big, fluffy blush brush with me right now. I'm currently on the lookout for a good blush brush. So if you guys have any suggestions, please let me know down below. I would like something, you know, big and fluffy. Okay, and the last product we're going to jump into is the Moon Tiara Stardust Highlighter. Now, this one looks super glittery. I'm actually really excited about it. So this 
same thing. I'm just going to tap a little bit into my lid right here. I have two highlighting brushes that I'm going to try it out with. I have the Morphe M510, which is like a tapered brush. And then I also have a fan brush from Wet n Wild. So I'm going to try the Morphe brush first. Just dip it in. Tap off a little bit of the excess. And let's go in. Oh, that's pretty. It does have like little noticeable specks of glitter in it. But if you use this as like the only like out there part of your makeup, if you make it like the focal point of your face, I think it would look beautiful. I wouldn't use it again with this blush. I think together they're a little much, but I do like them individually. They're just, and they sit really well on the skin. I do have some texture right here and it's not emphasizing the texture at all. So I'm going to tap a little bit more onto the lid and then go in with the fan brush to see if that makes a difference. Just tap that in. It's coming out okay. I personally like the application better with the Morphe pointed brush than I do the fan brush. But I really only like the fan brush with like really tightly pressed highlighters. With like looser pressed highlighters, I really like the more tapered highlighting brush. But it still comes out beautiful. I just think you can get a better blend with this brush. So I'm gonna actually go through and just blend out the highlighter a little bit. Okay, so that is the whole look. My overall thoughts on these products, let's go ahead and go through one by one. So with the foundation shades, I really just don't think there's a shade that matches me well enough to pick up a full size, but I will use the two lighter shades to set my eye primer just to use them up. And then the darkest shade, I'm gonna see if maybe that will work as a bronzer or a contour, because I don't wanna just get rid of them. The formula is really nice. I did like the way that it applied onto my eye. I would recommend getting the sample size and if one of their shades works for you I would see how that works. I can't really speak to how it holds up like throughout the entire face throughout the entire day um, but I think with a sample size like this that's really affordable I would recommend trying that one out. For the eyeshadows I was actually really impressed with how they blended. I wasn't expecting a whole lot in blendability. I thought that they would be like really nice like lid glitter shades and then that was it. But I am really impressed with how I was able to like tap off the glitter and then blend them out into the crease. They did blend out with almost like no issues at all. I will of course update you with how they wore throughout the day down below in the description box so make sure you check that out before you leave today. Um, my favorite shade for today had to have been my lid shade which is professional curiosity which came from the hannibal lecter line it is such a beautiful duochrome and whenever i like turn my head the light catches it differently and oh, it's stunning and with the undertones in this you can use it with a whole bunch of looks you can use it with warm looks with cool looks oh, i'm just really excited to keep using this shadow now for the blush and the highlighter i would not use them together again i think together they are a bit much but separately i did like how the blush looked again you only need a little 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 bit of product tap it off tap it off twice and then go in the highlighter i adore i think it is beautiful and again it's a loose product these are both loose products they are both nine and ten dollars and you're not going to run out of this anytime soon so i do think they're a great investment they're adorable packaging i'm just loving it Again, I will update you on wear time down below, so don't forget to check that out. Thank you so much for trying out this new brand with me. If you like me trying new brands and you want to suggest any other indie brands that you want me to check out, let me know down below. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget to also hit the little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video. And I hope I'll see you in my next one. Bye!